All right, guys, so this is the video two uh, in the biochemistry uh, series. So again, there's, you're going to see a lot of repetition in this, but it's, it's for a purpose. Uh, there's actually there's some rationale behind this. And all I can say at this point is just trust the process. Again, my goal is to get you through step one. Okay, so this question reads, it's going to be, which of the following is most likely responsible for the decrease in epinephrine from the researcher's trial? Okay, so we see this. <clears throat> you know when they start talking about epinephrine and you see these little enzymes, man, you got to be, what do we do? We go back and tell the story of phenylalanine. The question will read, a researcher is trying to develop a drug that impacts catecholamine synthesis. In animal experiments, researchers have noticed a decrease in epinephrine secretion by the adrenals. Which of the following is most likely responsible for the decrease in epinephrine from the researchers' trials? So they want to know, do you know the mechanism, okay? Or you know, the enzymes, <clears throat> even the rate-limiting step, perhaps. So we always will go back, and I'm telling you, it, is, it works, phenylalanine, and it's going to sound like a broken record, but I'm telling you there's a reason for it. Phenylalanine makes tyrosine, all right, which makes L-dopa, which makes dopa, dopamine, which makes norepinephrine, which makes epinephrine, okay? Which makes epinephrine. Now, phenylalanine in the setting of what? Oh, what's right here, right? In the setting of phenylalanine hydroxylase. Also, biopterin, right? I want you to make sure you know that. Biopterin. So phenylalanine in the setting of phenylalanine hydroxylase makes tyrosine. Tyrosine, these are nice in order for you. Tyrosine in the setting of tyrosine hydroxylase makes L-dopa, and remember this one, this step also uh, could use the biopterin, okay? The L-dopa to dopamine, this is from the uh, dopa decarboxylase. I don't know why I'm writing it, it's right there. And then the dopamine to norepinephrine makes, is from the dopamine beta hydroxylase. And then the norepinephrine to epinephrine is going to be our phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase. All right, it's a mouthful. So again, phenylalanine to tyrosine, L-dopa, dopa, norepinephrine, epinephrine. And then we have this, uh, the COMT, right, catechol-O-methyltransferase. That's the guy that helps break down dopamine and norepinephrine. And this is the one where we said you got the MAO, uh, for some reason the B comes first, and then MAOA, uh, right? So that's where that one comes into play. So back to this question. You know, it says uh, they're trying to do this experiment. Anyways, uh, when it talks about impacts catecholamine synthesis, so you kind of think, like, what are our, um, you know, our, our catecholamines well, the main ones, at least in this in this kind of setting, are going to be our dopamine, norepinephrine, uh, and and epinephrine. And so, when they say it's a decrease in epinephrine, which one mainly makes this guy? You know, right? They're not saying it's a decrease in norepinephrine. They're not saying it's a decrease in dopa. When they say there's a decrease uh, in the epinephrine, you got to go straight to it. You take one step back. Who's the who's the key uh, enzyme? that transfers norepinephrine to epinephrine, and you look it back, it's gonna be the phenylethanolamine N-methyltransferase. All because you know that that's the guy that, that, that works the hardest in making the epinephrine. So again, uh, you know, you have to have this down uh, to a T. Some other, and then you can start, once you, once you understand the basics of it, then you can start adding in these little things. Like, again, dopamine and norepinephrine, they're broken down by COMT, MAO, MAOB. Uh, then norepinephrine is broken down by COMT and MAOA. Uh, so then you can start adding in, okay, well, I know the COMT inhibitors are these medications, tolcapone, you know, we don't use them much, at least I'm a, not that I'm aware of, uh, um, and entacapone, right? You got to know that they are. COMT inhibitors. So what are they going to do? They're going to, they're going to increase the dopamine and potentially increase the norepinephrine. So um, let me see. What else can we can we say about that? This area, this the the phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase, it gets uh, shall we say upregulated by 
cortisol, okay? By cortisol, because this mainly uh, this mainly happens in obviously it's in the uh, adrenals, okay? Mainly produced in the adrenals is our is our epinephrine, okay? Uh, adrenal medulla. And it's 80% epi, and I think it's 20% uh, norepi. So mainly the epi, adrenal medulla, or in the adrenals, but phenylethanolamine and methyltransferase upregulated by uh, cortisol. Okay? So again, these are our three main catecholamines do dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. But you gotta know the pathway, you know, right? This is the second video in the biochemistry. We're starting with the phenyl phenylalanine, the tyrosine, L-dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. You gotta be able to tell that story. You gotta learn how to take that right turn at tyrosine. And, you know, when he goes down, it's gonna make homogentisate, which, gonna, which is gonna make the uh, malleal acetoacetate and the fumarel acetate, which is gonna make the fumarate, goes into the TCA cycle. But if you knock out that homogentisic acid, what's going to, uh, I'm sorry, not the homogentisic acid, but it's going to be the, uh, you know, I'm going to say the hydroxylase, but uh, the homogentisate, uh, I'm sorry, deoxygenase, okay? The homogentisate deoxygenase, and that's going to give us our alcomptonuria. So again, it's all about telling the story. But the answer for this one, it's gonna be E, phenyl, ethanolamine, and methyltransferase upgraded, can be upgraded by cortisol, but it's the guy that's gonna decrease the epinephrine.